rock is Jesus. Yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus. The only one. Be very sure. Be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. In time. Jesus. Praise the Lord, folks. Be very sure the anchor grips the solid rock. Amen. Jesus is the anchor. Is that what the scripture says? No, the Bible says our hope. Our hope in him is as an anchor. Jesus is the anchor. Amen? He's the anchor. But he's also our hope. And he's the rock. Are you listening? He is the anchor, and he's the rock. He's our hope. The Bible says that hope maketh not ashamed. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Scripture tells us that we have now faith, hope, and charity. And you're not going to experience charity if you don't have faith. And you're not going to experience hope if you don't have faith. Amen. You're not going to experience charity if you don't have faith and hope. It's like climbing a ladder. It's growth. It's growing. You start out with faith. Every man is given a measure of faith. But that faith's got to grow. And you got to add to your faith, we see in the scripture. Add to your faith, right? And all the way to charity. Amen. And we know there's a counterfeit in this world of charity. Men that say they give that don't give. They're not really givers, right? They consider themselves the haves. While they look down on the world and call them the have-nots. They're not really operating in charity. Amen. They don't pay any taxes. Amen. 
They put all their money into trusts and into foundations and into charities, and they give nothing. They pay nothing in taxes. Well, everybody else does. They're the richest, and yet they pay no taxes, hardly any taxes. Are you listening? And then, and then the Democrats come along and say, we're going to tax the rich, and they never do. And they never do. That's just the message they use. Amen? I haven't seen any help yet from this administration. I haven't seen a stimulus checks or nothing helping people. Sad. So sad. Just empty promises, lies, deception. All politics, right? All politics. Once they get into office, everything they promised, I even heard Obama saying that. I heard him saying, those are just campaign campaign promises. You know that. He did not want to have a puppy for his daughters in the White House. He didn't want to have a dog because he probably figured the girl's not going to take care of that dog, Obama. And yet, when he when they asked him, I thought you were going to get the girls a dog. And months and months went by. And finally, they wouldn't let up. The, the press kept pressing him. How come you haven't got a dog for the girls? And he said, well, you know, that was a campaign promise. Are you listening? But he eventually had to get them a dog because they would not stop pressing. Is that what the press is for? They made a big deal out of it. Make sure those girls get a puppy. Make sure they get a dog. Look at right now in this current administration. You hear more about Major than you do about Biden. It's sad. What a, what a wicked and perverse generation. They'd rather talk about dogs than talk about people and the needs of people. Amen. Praise the Lord. And our lesson this afternoon is going to be dealing with condemnation. I think this is one of the most misunderstood topics in the Bible. If you don't understand this, then you're miserable, right? You're still in the state that Paul the Apostle was in chapter 6 of Romans, chapter 7 of Romans, still condemned, right? Still wretched. But Paul learned some things. Amen. That's what we're going to do. We're going to learn some things. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for your holy word. We thank you for the scripture. Lord, we pray that you will help us by the power of the Holy Ghost as you anoint us, Lord. We, we pray that you help us to help, Lord, those in this hour that don't understand how they can be delivered from condemnation, how they can walk free of condemnation, that they can walk in the liberty, Lord, of the Holy Ghost, and the liberty of the Spirit, free from all condemnation, Lord. We didn't say, Lord, that they'd be free from conviction, but free from condemnation. We pray, Lord, that you bless and anoint as we minister your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Praise God. Well, it's every day our thoughts and as the Lord leads, our prayers are with those in Texas, God's people in Texas. We don't know altogether what you're going through, but we know that God is on the throne and that God is in control and he will prevail. The Lord will prevail. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Lord, for your presence right now, Lord. Thank you for your presence, God. Thank you for your comfort, Lord, that you give, that you bring to us by the Holy Ghost, Lord. You said you'd send another comforter, Lord. We thank you for the presence of the Holy Ghost right now, Lord. We thank you for that comfort in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. John chapter 3, beginning with verse 17. 
John chapter 3, beginning with verse 17. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world. Get that notion out of your mind. Get that idea out of your mind. Jesus never came into this world to heap condemnation on people, right? The world would be, excuse me, but that the world through him might be saved. That's why he came. He didn't come to heap condemnation on folks. But how many know that those that are in sin and those that don't believe on the Lord Jesus, they're condemned already. So why would it be beneficial for the Lord to condemn those that are already condemned? He came not to condemn. He came to deliver. So if you're experiencing condemnation in this hour, it didn't come from Jesus. I didn't say it didn't come from the law. I said it didn't come from Jesus. The law came by Moses, right? But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. He didn't come to add condemnation unto you, right? He came to deliver you from condemnation, to deliver you from sin. Because because of sin, that is why we're condemned by the law. The law is good. There's nothing, there's nothing unholy or wrong about the laws they're teaching today. No. But man cannot be saved by the law because the weakness of the flesh. So God sent Jesus. Aren't you glad? Amen. That you and I could also receive the righteousness of the law by walking by faith, by receiving through faith, by the grace of God, that we can receive the very righteousness of the law and be changed, be transformed. Praise God. So condemnation doesn't come from Jesus. Condemnation comes from the law, right? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Feel the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. Let that sink in. Next time the devil tries to get you to believe you're condemned by Jesus. Jesus is waiting for you to repent. Jesus is waiting for you to turn to him, to turn back to him. Amen? To get your eyes on him. Jesus, I'm going to say it again, did not come into this world to condemn. You got to let that get in your heart. You got to receive that. You got to understand that Jesus is the deliverer. Jesus is the Savior. Amen? But that the world through him might be saved. Do you see the objective? Do you see the reason why Jesus came into this world? Not to condemn, but to save. Praise the Lord. And this is condemnation. Let's take a look. This is condemnation. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Did you hear that? This is condemnation. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Do you see how faith in Jesus Christ delivers from condemnation, real faith, faith that comes from God, right? Faith that come, cometh from the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you really have faith, even a measure of faith, then you're being delivered from condemnation. You have to believe. You must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be delivered from condemnation. He that believeth not is condemned already. The world doesn't believe. Amen. The world does not believe in Jesus Christ. They do not believe he came to save. Are you listening? 
If they really believed, then they would be delivered from condemnation. Amen. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. The scripture makes it clear why the world is condemned. Because they don't believe. They don't believe. And this is condemnation. Boy, he makes it very, very simple, doesn't he? Very plain. This is condemnation. That light is come into the world and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Those that are living today under condemnation, their deeds are evil. You are not going to experience condemnation if your deeds are good. Anybody listening? If you love darkness rather than the light, you are condemned already. You will continue to experience condemnation all the way to the judgment day when you're cast into the lake of fire. That's where the condemned go. But Jesus came to deliver us from that condemnation where we would not be condemned to hell in the lake of fire. He came to set the captives free. He came to deliver, brothers and sisters. Don't let the devil get that twisted in your mind. Jesus is not against you. Jesus didn't come to condemn you. He came to deliver you. He's the light. Amen? Now, when when Jesus comes into the world, he comes to reprove the world of sin because they don't believe. Is that what the scripture says? Jesus Christ, when he came into this world, he convicted of sin. People were convicted of sin. They weren't condemned by him. They were already condemned. When Jesus sent the Holy Ghost, another comforter, The Bible says that the Holy Ghost was sent, the Spirit of Truth was sent to reprove men, to reprove the world of sin because they don't believe. Did you know the Holy Ghost in this earth today is here to convict the world, not to condemn the world? Just like Jesus, the Holy Ghost is not here to condemn. Amen. The Holy Ghost comes to convict and convince the world of sin so they might be delivered, so they might be delivered from sin and delivered from darkness. Praise God, just as you and I have experienced glory to the Lamb. And then he goes on to say, for everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Amen. If you truly have come into the light and your deeds have been reproved, you're going to love. You're going to love, first and foremost, you're going to love your brothers, your sisters, but you're even going to love your enemies. But how can you do that if you don't love God? The Bible says, by this we know we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. Today they're saying, oh, just love your neighbor as yourself. Skip loving God, right? Now the Bible says to love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your might, Amen. And to love thy neighbor as thyself. Today they're trying to sidestep that and just say, love your neighbor. They think their love is enough. 
That's what they think. They think they can continue in sin, they can continue in darkness, and that they can love their neighbor. How futile to try to love without God's love. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light. But he that doeth continues to do truth, that continues to obey truth, cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Do you really want your deeds reproved? Do you really want to get straightened out? Do you really want to get corrected? Do you really want to do right? You got to come into the light. Amen. You got to come into the light where your deeds are made manifest. Praise the Lord. That's why they hated Jesus. That's why they crucified him because they didn't want the light. They didn't want the light manifesting what they were and what was in them. Jesus said, you appear on the outside one way, but inwardly you appear another way. Right? Before men, you appear to be good, righteous, but inwardly. What did he say? You're full of extortion, right? Full of murder. And the list goes on and on. Covetousness, right? Inwardly, they were ravening wolves. Inwardly, the scripture says that they, that they were full of the devil. But outwardly, they acted and appeared as though they were righteous. But when that light shined on them, they wanted to kill Jesus. Anybody listening? They wanted to kill him because there was murder in their hearts. And that murder was manifest. What was Jesus doing to cause that spirit of murder, to cause that in their heart to manifest? I mean, one minute they're they're giving him praise. One minute they're giving him accolades, just like the apostles. One minute they're giving them accolades, the next minute they want to kill him. What changed? It wasn't the the Lord and it wasn't the apostles. So what changed? What was really in the heart began to manifest. Are you listening? Dear God, people, the light will make manifest what's inside of you. If you really want to get those things dealt with inside of you, you got to come into the light. Amen. You got to do the truth. You got to apply the truth. You got to live the truth. Praise the Lord. John 5 and 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Did you see who Jesus is telling them to believe on? Not himself. What is he saying? Believe on him that sent me. Because Jesus did not want men to put their trust even in himself as a man. He wanted them to see him as God. He wanted them to understand and recognize that he is God in the flesh and that they need to put their faith, their trust in God, not in a man, not in a good man, and not in a prophet. Amen. Praise God. But in the Son of God, in God Almighty. Dear Lord, do you really believe that Jesus is the Son of God? If you don't, it's because you're still in darkness. Amen. You've not passed from death unto life yet. If you don't have love for the brethren. Anybody listening? If you really have passed from death to life, 
If you really have come in the light, you're going to love the brethren. You're going to love the brethren. 1 John chapter 3, verse 14. For we know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. Isn't that plain enough? He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Amen. So John in chapter 5, verse 24, he answers in 1 John chapter 3, verse 14. Same John, just with a greater understanding, with greater revelation. Are you listening? Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. John makes it very plain, doesn't he? Very plain. Is that plain enough, brothers and sisters? Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer hath everlasting life or eternal life abiding in him. Do you see what the goal is? Brotherly love. Right? But God doesn't tell us to stop there. He says, love even your enemies. Right? We, we've got to come to the place where not just loving our brothers and sisters in the Lord, but we've got to come to the place where we love even our enemies. And you're not going to do that if you're under the condemnation of the law. What is it that brings us under the condemnation of the law? There's nothing that will bring you under the condemnation of the law except one thing, and that is sin. And anything that's not of faith is sin. So unbelief will bring you under the law. Anybody listening? The law is good. But when you're in the flesh, brothers and sisters, you can't keep the law. Amen? The only way to obey the law of God, the word of God, to keep the law of God is in the spirit. And that's why we see in Romans chapter 8 that there is a overcoming life in the spirit. The law, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Glory to God. We're not trying to keep the Ten Commandments in, written in stone, brothers and sisters. A new law. God has written his laws in our hearts, praise the Lord. A living, a new and a living way to live for God by the Holy Ghost. Uh, the law of the Spirit. There is therefore now no condemnation. Now don't get this twisted because I've heard ministers misquote this. They'll say there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. And then they'll stop. They don't read the rest of it. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For me, these things are very plain, very simple. But I think where people miss it is that they fight the word. They, they are in the flesh so that they resist the truth when they're in the flesh. Listen, I'm going to tell you, don't ever read Romans, or don't even read the Bible, but don't read Romans chapter 8 if you're in the flesh. Spend some time in prayer. Get that flesh on the altar before you start reading this chapter. Because you won't, you're, you won't be able to accept it. You won't receive it. Because you're in the flesh. Your flesh is enmity with God. Don't read your Bible when you're in the flesh. Amen? You're not going to get anywhere. Your flesh is going to resist the truth. Your flesh is against God. Your flesh is against the truth. Before you even open your Bible, and really, before you even start listening to this broadcast, when a new message comes in, make sure that you've spent some time in prayer. Make time, make, make time and, and make sure that flesh is on the altar 
before you listen to the message because your flesh is just like anybody else's flesh. Even after you get saved, your flesh is still evil. Your flesh is still going to fight God, still going to fight the truth. You ever notice that some days it, the truth just comes like living water and you just drink it in, but there may be another day, all of a sudden, why am I fighting the truth? Brother Joseph hasn't changed. Brother Joseph's still giving us the truth. So why am I fighting him? Why am I rejecting what he's saying? Because you're in the flesh. Put the flesh on the altar. Crucify that flesh. Offer yourself a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Then listen to the word. Amen? Then open your Bible. Get the flesh on the altar first. You know, if folks would put the flesh on the altar before they come and gather together in a church service, it wouldn't be so difficult for the minister to get folks across the finish line, to meet the goal, for God to bless his people. Are you listening? Anybody that's in the flesh is going to be experiencing condemnation, is going to be experiencing, uh, really, you're going to be experiencing unbelief and doubt, fear, worry, anxiousness. There's no good thing that dwelleth in the flesh. Amen. When, when the young rich ruler there, or the young rich man that said to Jesus, when, when Jesus, or I should say, when Jesus said to him, he said, uh, have you kept the law? And he said, yeah, since my youth, I've kept the law. He said, what, what, do I lack yet? What is the, What am I lacking? What is it? And see, Jesus, being the light, made manifest what was in his heart. Jesus said, if you're going to be perfect and follow me, he said, you're going to have to give all your riches away. Amen. The light is shining. Amen. He's saying, I kept the law. I've done these things from my youth. Amen. But he wasn't willing to give up his riches and give it to the poor. He walked away, the Bible says, sorrowful. What lack I yet? I was going to do that in a separate message, but I'll give it to you now, brothers and sisters. What lack I yet? You've done all these things, but what do you lack? What is the one thing that's causing you not to come to the light? What's causing you to turn away? What's causing you to walk away from Jesus? What's causing you to be sorrowful? Is there something that you're holding on to so dear that it means more to you than following Jesus? Amen. This young man, this rich man, he, listen, he kept the law to the best of his ability. But when it came to giving up his riches, and I could spend some time here because when Jesus said to the disciples, it's a hard thing for the rich man to enter the kingdom. They didn't understand that. Who then can be saved? Amen. Who then can be saved? Jesus said, what's impossible with man is possible with God. For all things are possible with God. Amen. Praise the Lord. God made it possible for you and I to live an overcoming life. Amen. That's what we read about in Romans chapter 8. 
This is the overcoming life in Christ Jesus. To live after the Spirit. But not just to live after the Spirit, but to be filled with the Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. Filled with the Holy Ghost. To walk in the Spirit, to live in the Spirit. There's so many of God's people today that have yet to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And there's no way you're going to walk in the Spirit if you're not filled with the Spirit. You've got to be filled with the Spirit. So important. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? What lack I yet? You may be one of those that lacks the Holy Ghost. You may be saved. Amen. You're trying to obey God. You're trying to do the will of God. You're trying to please the Lord. What lack I yet? Are you willing to give up your treasure chest of pride? Humble yourself and be filled with the Holy Ghost. What lack I yet? Amen. Your God, listen to this preacher. You're going to walk in victory. You're going to live a life of victory. You've got to be willing to be filled with the Holy Ghost. For the law, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Very few, even of God's people today, Very few understand these things. How many know Paul received these things by revelation? You think you're just going to receive it so easily if you're in the flesh? You're not going to receive it. Your carnal mind won't receive the things of God. The natural man cannot receive the things which are spiritual, for they're spiritually discerned. Neither can he know them. You're not going to understand this book. Romans, or at least this chapter, if you're not filled with the Spirit. Is that true? Not altogether, because think about it. You're going to have to understand it to experience it. Look look at uh, Paul. He began to understand these things back in Romans 6 and 7. Long before, amen, he was filled with the Spirit. He began to start to understand, I'm wretched, right? I need something more. Paul was in the desert for quite some time. Are you listening? The Holy Ghost was teaching him, revealing to him, you've got to subdue this flesh. Amen. And that's what God's teaching you and I. You're never going to live a life free from condemnation and living a life in victory in the liberty of the Spirit over sin if you're not filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. Isn't that what the Scripture says? Be not drunken with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. That's probably the greatest burden that I bear, is that God's people would be filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Just think about how much easier the job is for the minister when folks are filled with the Holy Ghost. So few in this hour that are filled with the Spirit. Amen? That are being filled to the Spirit more and more every day. It's not enough to be filled to the Holy Ghost just one time. you got to keep that experience up to date. Amen? you got to keep yourself filled with the Holy Ghost. And as you develop and grow and mature, you begin to have more capacity for the Holy Ghost, and you'll receive more of the Holy Ghost as you stretch like that wineskin. It's an old wineskin. It won't stretch. It'll break, and you'll have holes. Amen. You won't be able to contain the Holy Ghost. 
But God gives you that new nature, that new wine skin. Amen. When God pours in that new wine, the Holy Ghost, amen, you will stretch. God will stretch you out, cause you to grow. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to the Lamb. Bought some baggies the other day. They got some new material now, plastic baggies, that when you put stuff in it, it gets bigger, stretches out. Well, that's the idea be- with the wineskin. Just because you're saved doesn't mean you have a new wineskin. Doesn't mean you have a new nature. The Lord wants to take out that old, brittle nature. Amen? That won't stretch. And he wants to take out that nature and put in a new nature. The divine nature. That is stretching. Able to stretch as he fills with new wine. Amen. Folks, we need the Holy Ghost. We've got to be filled with the Spirit. Amen. Just because you speak in other tongues doesn't mean you were filled with the Holy Ghost. There's a lot of folks in this hour that think just because they speak in tongues, there's a lot of people in this hour that have been filled with the Spirit, but it's not the Holy Ghost. It's another spirit. And if that spirit is fighting the truth, if that spirit is fighting the Word of God, how many know that's not the Holy Spirit? The Spirit of truth doesn't fight the truth. Amen. If you've got a spirit that's causing you to be stubborn and rebellious against the truth, that's not the Holy Spirit. That's not the spirit of truth. Amen. You're not fighting against Brother Joseph. You're fighting against the authority of God's word. You're fighting against the law, God's word. You're fighting against his authority. Praise the Lord. That's an antichrist spirit, folks. Amen? All the way back to Azusa Street. That was not the Holy Ghost. That was another spirit. That was another gospel. That was another Jesus. Amen? That's not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Those that spearheaded and led that were not of God. They were not of God. Look it up yourself. Do your own research. This charismatic spirit is anti-Christ. Amen. It's preparing people for the beast. Amen. Turn the lights down low. Right? Turn on the music that sounds like the world. Put some lyrics to it that are about Jesus. Let's lull them into greater darkness. That's what's happening today. Amen. There's so many things that could be said right here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Feel the Holy Ghost. I believe the Lord wants to help us. I believe he really, really wants to help us. If we will come into the light. Amen. Praise the Lord. You don't have to live a life under condemnation. You don't have to live condemned. Amen. You can be free from condemnation. You can be free. Condemnation don't come from the devil as it's being taught today. No, condemnation comes from the law. Conviction comes from the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the law, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus that hath made me free. Are you free? Are you? Praise the Lord. You know, today the the idea is free to sin. Lawlessness, lasciviousness. They turn the grace of God into a license to sin. I'm free to sin. I'm free to rebel. I'm free to be stubborn. I'm free to do my own thing. I'm free to do my own will. That's not free. That's Alistair Crawley. Do as thou wilt. That's Satanism, folks. Amen. Free to sin. Free to do as thou wilt. 
This shall be the whole of the law. Alistair Crowley was known as the beast. Amen. He was proud of that. His mother called him the beast. He had 666 on his forehead. Or on his head. He was proud of that. But he's not the only one. There are many antichrists. Many right now in this government of the United States of America that are following Aleister Crowley. That are following the teachings of the Freemasons and in following the teachings of the Kabbalah. That's right. That's Aleister Crowley. He taught those things. He used the Kabbalah out of Babylon, leading folks to Egypt, to the Egyptian teachings. Are you listening? Praise the Lord, we're just the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Amen, people. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank God for the spirit of Elijah, the Holy Ghost. Amen. Dear God, we need to pay attention because there is another spirit in the land making people believe you're free to sin. You're free to disobey the word of God. Do as thou wilt. Lord Jesus. Freedom from sin. That's why Jesus came. Freedom from sin. Deliverance from sin. Not free in your sin. Not delivered to sin. But delivered from sin. Delivered from condemnation. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, listen. I had not known sin. Except the law had said to me, thou shalt not. Right? Thank God for the law. But don't stay there. Amen. The law is a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. Married to another. I'm not married to the law anymore. I'm not married to condemnation. I'm married to Christ. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the truth. God bless you, folks. Got the power.